Okay, so do not be someone's source of suffering. Don't let yourself become someone's source of suffering. This tends to happen a lot. This concept we see a lot in family. I've seen it a lot in family. I'll give you an example. I have a relative who uses the restroom, an elder. When I go, if the relative has done something, I go and there's a stench, I go and I spray. The relative takes offense to that. Now, I could ask myself the question just as you could ask yourself the question with whatever situation, all right? Are you aware or am I aware that my action is causing harm to someone? In other words, am I aware that my action is making someone feel bad? Okay? If you ask yourself that question, or you break down that question even more, you realize that the real question is, am I intentionally, am I intentionally hurting someone? Okay? You should know that answer. For most of you, obviously, it's a no. You're not intentionally hurting someone. But if someone takes it personal, then that's someone who takes it personal. You know what I'm saying? So, say, say for example, um, let's see. Say, for example, uh, we're in a uh, trial or maybe you're talking with someone. And the purpose of it is to realize, whether, is to find out whether you're causing harm or not. Okay. Or whether you're guilty or not guilty of causing harm. When we were taught spelling and words in school, it was for a reason. Aside from language, but it gets manipulated. Words get manipulated. Context gets manipulated, twisted around. Okay? So this is why sometimes, well, there's different contexts, better said. But words get manipulated and twisted around to make a different context. And so you have to listen to the context of what someone is asking or what you may be asking yourself. If you're talking with someone about what's happening, for example, and they want to be like, oh, well, but the elder. In other words, they want to acknowledge that the elder has decided to put on this suffering, but not acknowledge how you feel. They want to acknowledge what the elder or what someone else in your relative family or whatever is feeling, but not acknowledge what you're feeling. Then you know that's a very biased person, most likely from someone who usually thinks they're right as well. Okay? So you cannot allow yourself to let family or anyone make you believe that you are the reason for their chosen suffering. Okay? Because, for example, when I go and spray the bathroom, I just go and spray the bathroom, period. I'm not trying to say anything. That's normal. There's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong with that? What is wrong? So you don't want anyone, not even family or friends, to try to make you feel like the reason that they suffer or the reason that they choose to suffer is because you are doing so purposely. And I've had that happen plenty of times in the family. I've seen it plenty of times in the family. So don't let that be you. Okay, When you dive deep, when you meditate, when you self-reflect, become self-aware, self-actualized, you know thyself, and you let love guide you, and you let love work through you, you let the love that you are be within you, engulf your every being, spiritually, intellectually, and physically, then no one, absolutely no one, not even family, can manipulate your thinking or feelings to make you feel shamed or guilty for something that they choose to feel bad about simply because you are being you. That happens a lot with family. You could be you, you could be doing something, but they want to take offense to it. I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen it, man. It sucks. It really sucks. But what sucks more is if you allow it to, if you allow it to determine who you are. Don't allow it to determine who you are. You know who you are. Get to know thyself, okay? And anyways, that's all. So I hope that helps, all right? Feel free to share, subscribe, like, all right? Share the message. And maybe share another example, you know, that you learned, all right? Share it in the comment section. Let's help each other grow. Namaste.